Here we go. Yeah. Right. Set a link as you be tuning into what you get to life. Get into the nitty and gritty of what the game's about. What it's really like when you get paid to fight and train for bouts. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it on louder. About to drop some knowledge, yo, with Drew Dominguez, Sean Fowler. About to give it to you straight, y'all. No filler, pulling no punches, really couldn't get no riller. I'm a flow spiller, recognize that no one's illa. Keep it locked right on this episode because it's gonna be killer. Elite technique with the flows to get you hyped. I thought you knew with Sean and Drew, the crew. Of a jiu-jitsu life Test, test, test Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the show And then we'll just, I'll introduce you I'm going to introduce Drew and then we'll go right into it all right, good morning, everybody. I'm Sean Fowler here with 5365 and a Jiu-Jitsu Life. Also here with my co-host, as usual, Drew Dominguez. Hello, good morning. And the ever so famous Sergio Hernandez. What up, what up? A Barrett, Yosh- a Barrett Yoshida black belt. Yeah, man. A Barrett Yoshida, um, I did Jiu-Jitsu with him since the first day. And uh, first day of Jiu-Jitsu was with Barrett. White belt. Dumb kid with dreadlocks. <laughs> I remember that. That's funny. Um, <laughs> How long have you been with Barrett? Um, I think, well, I was like 26, 27 at the time, and I'm 41 now. So, uh, shit, man, my math, my maybe like 14 yeah. years or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's good shit. I like yeah. it. It took me about 10 years to get my black belt. Yeah, yeah. that's about right. Is there any, any stories you can share, any funny stories you can share with us with Barrett? Because, you know. Well, there's always the dirty dungeon, bro. There's <laughs> the dirty well, dungeon, right? Yeah, the yeah, dirty dungeon. It's still undisputed downstairs. Yeah, dude, it was crazy down there. I don't think they had, like, the, the, the permits to be, to have a gym. Because we didn't have, like, a fire exit down there, I think. That's yeah, so, was, yeah, yeah, it was bad. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> up the steps and that was it dude the One inspections way the inspections that come in or whatever you know so like we'd have to like throw a bunch of shit at the bottom of the, of the gym so I try to pretend that it was like it wasn't being used yeah yeah so we had to pretend that it wasn't a gym you know but it was like there's, there was no windows or nothing it was in the basement God, it was so dirty in there oh yeah. man I, you know I, I trained with Tim you know, you, yeah good friend Tim and it was just like he said there was just like you, you wouldn't know it. you might catch something if you don't go home and shower right oh there. staff yeah. dude staff yeah. and MRSA man oh yeah. infantigo man it was bad ringworm roundworm like I remember it being so dirty in there and I remember a couple times it flooded out and it didn't get cleaned out properly like it was just terrible yeah. but everybody's in there training like training like, <laughs> hard and, and the scheduling was like there was an hour maybe in between each class or whatever I don't know like the new gym we're at uh, it's way more like there's a class everything's class clean class. too everything's clean Every, yeah, every, yeah. every day I mean more I think the environment like the, the uh, just like the mental aspect oh 100% grimy dude like yeah. you had to go to war like every single round we did every round the class was over everybody did rounds and uh, those MMA practices down there uh, I seen grown men cry down there oh yeah That's for right. sure dude, fools end up bleeding like yeah. I don't know man and then we had the uh, war machine and a bunch of other dudes. John, I forgot about Johnny. I, I forgot about it. Yeah. 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 Like, so much. Well, and everybody, everybody was in a kill me mentality was, back then. Uh, training was different. Yeah, Herman was yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That shit was hectic. I remember one time this dude came in and he was like <laughs> talking shit about Guam, and he was just like, "I'm a, you know, I'm a marine." I think he was bullshitting. He was a little bit crazy, and he's like, "Yeah, I like your gym, but I want to take an MMA class, see how it goes." But I don't know. This is more of a Guam gym. Those guys ain't as tough as they are. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and I was like, what? And we were like strapped. And you got all kinds, of, you got like all kinds of Islander boys there. <laughs> and so they, he signed a waiver, and then uh, he went to the MMA class. And it was one murder squad. Was hearing this dude say this stuff, and War Machine, Herman, everyone was there, and I was like, shit, I want to beat this dude's ass. <laughs> And I'm not even a striker. Yeah, yeah. So like, I'm like, I'm gonna get first dibs on this dude, and then she pushed me aside. I was like, no, 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 let me go first, let me go first. And everyone seemed red, you know, wanted to kill this guy. And holy hell, man, he got his ass beat. Yeah, it's it an eye opener for sure. Yeah, like, you don't usually walk into a gym talking shit, bro. That's that's, that's probably the wrong thing to do. And so I think War Machine made him pass out. Beat him. Like, this shit was like, shit, it was crazy, dude. Yeah, he passed out. Woke up. 
pass that one else up. Else now woke up a couple more times. Dude, it was kind of pretty dark, man. But you know, he he walked out of the gym okay. Well, you just had a rough night. Yeah. Tell us something about Master Barrett, man. You, you know, I, I've heard some stories from from Tim and other people, and down down there in the dungeon, yeah. where he's you know people have walked in there, and you know he's taken care of them, and he's had to you know put some people to sleep. Yeah, man, I've seen a lot of that. You know what I'm saying? And he already has that reputation. I think like people got freaked out by that. But the thing is that he's like a really fair dude and a really patient, patient guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like Barrett's one of the nicest guys. Quiet. Yeah, exactly. He's quiet unless you know him. You got to know Barrett. Like you got to be on a personal level with Barrett for him to open up to you and actually talk to you and smile and laugh. He's Otherwise, funny. you'll never get that out of him. He's so funny, dude. He's so down to earth and chill. And like his genuine love for jujitsu is unmatched. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he still like, trains. As Dude, far as he, I think he teaches like, I think you want to say he teaches like eight classes a day still. Yeah. And, he, and he trains in every one of those classes. Yeah, he trains. Dude. And it doesn't matter like when someone shows up to the gym, that's like a good. If you, if, if, when someone's visiting, Barrett always rolls. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter what, like, he's going to give that person a roll and treat him good. And when he's, like, teaching classes, not on his phone, like, he actually gives a shit. You know? The only like, time I've never seen Barrett roll is whenever he had staff. Yeah, yeah. And even then, back in the day, like, yeah, but I mean. Dude, he's got his arm torn, his, like, yeah. And he's yeah. still training. You know? he, it's insane. Dude. I've never seen anything like it. And I thought, I thought the way Barrett is, every jiu jitsu school, every jiu jitsu black belt is like that he's like so different dude. is that so one of the reasons why you, you stayed from white to black yeah I'm really a loyal person you know even outside of jiu-jitsu like I, I just if someone treats me fair I want to like keep supporting them you know right. so, right. yeah and, and his character is just like like I said, man, the love for the art that he has is unmatched. Yeah, it's Barrett's unmatched. amazing. He is. Yeah. He really is. And uh, he's a legend, man. He's been using uh, Abu Dhabi in 99, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's been competing at the highest level ever since, still to this day. Right? And actually, he's in the uh, tournament next weekend. The, um Worlds? No, combat, combat. Yeah. Oh, he did combat jiu yeah, man. Doing combat jiu jitsu. <laughs> yes. And so, more than anything, I think that's what kept me doing jiu jitsu. If it wasn't for Barry, I would have just stopped. You know, if I had, a, if I had a different instructor, I would have been a blue belt. And they're like, well, this was cool, man. I learned how to defend myself a little bit. I think I'm gonna stop. You know, but it was my relationship with Barry that that kept me training. Well, and then also I think not only that, but you got you have some really really talented sound guys that you came up with too, like yeah. you know Ben and Dom. And, and uh, yeah, you know, and, and Tim. I mean, Tim you guys, you guys have some amazing guys that have come out of there, you know, and, and yeah. actually achieved the rank of black belt. You know what I mean? And that doesn't happen very often. You're Barrett's. Tim was his first, right, here in San Diego, and you were his second. Me and uh, Tim got our black belts the same day. Okay, yeah, so yeah, so you got, okay, so you guys, you guys both, so you guys were his first black belts in San Diego. Yeah, homegrown from white yeah. to black. And I, I, I was well, uh, Tim came in as a blue belt, I think, or something like that. I, I, oh, I that's, right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. He was at Fabio back in the day, but yeah, yeah, yeah. still, like even as a blue belt, like I don't think even once you get your blue belt, I don't feel like you've really touched the surface of jujitsu at that point. But yeah, like, a lot of people stay with Barrett, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, so. But you know what? It, like some people, I think, have left because they don't get belted fast enough. Or something. Yeah, Barrett. You know what well, you know what? And and I see this. I see, I didn't get belted fast either. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and um, Barrett's system is a little bit different. A lot of people don't know this about Barrett. Um, he basically he ba he has a kill system, right? Yeah. And his kill system is based on competition. If you can adequately um, execute in competition and you can win then that kill system actually trans translates and transfers back into the gym. And, um, you know, otherwise, I, I don't know very many guys that have went through your program that have actually belted up that didn't compete at some point. You have to you know, compete. If you and, don't, and, compete, yeah. you don't get a belt. Yeah, and he was, yeah. he's very, he's been very hardcore about the competition aspect and, and, and all of that going forward. And I I think that um, out of all those all those guys, though, you, you two are the only, Tim and you are the only two black belts, right? Uh, Dominic guys. Dom finally got his? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't, yeah, that. I didn't know that. I love Dom too, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and Dom is another one, man. Dom's been doing it for so long, you know, and I, I really... Um, there's only three of you guys out of the whole group? No, no, there's... Uh, let me see. Uh, JD. Oh, JD. Yeah. yeah that, oh, JD got his black belt? 
Sure. He's a brown. He's a brown. Is he a brown? JD's a brown. JD's a brown. Yeah, and JD's been training for a thousand years too, and he competes all the time too. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's a savage. I love it. Yeah, dude, the, 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 it's like so, uh, JD's a good example. You know what I'm saying? Like he doesn't have a sense of entitlement. Nah, nah. You know, he's just like he loves it, dude. He's like whatever, man. Like I'm just gonna train hard and compete when, whenever I compete and stuff like that. But well, I think entitlement uh, for a lot of people. That's that's the trip. That's the trippy part nowadays. Like in the last couple of years. Well, and everybody thinks they're entitled to the belt. Oh yeah, like, I did two years already. Yeah. Now. I can't you owe it to me. Melted. Like, well, did you win worlds, bro? Did you win Pan Am? Yeah. Like, did you do anything? Yeah. Do you have any accolade? Anything at all? Just hold back, bro. Like, be the best white belt. Be the best yeah, blue belt. Sure. You know, they get those medals. <laughs> and then, but what, what do you think the rush is for some people to to get there? I think it's status. I think it's status. Status, but also I could see them trying to make a living. Off of jiu-jitsu when they haven't even contributed like yeah oh, what's jiu-jitsu very true I didn't think about what's, it like what's that what's jiu-jitsu doing for me type of shit right it's like dude what are you talking about bro you, you haven't even really about. truly embraced well, jiu-jitsu embrace you know you, you, you pay to train you so what do you mean what is it doing for you you, you, you want you choose to be there you don't yeah. have to be there yeah dude I don't know man. Uh, well I think uh, a lot of people don't understand like first and foremost this isn't a sport it's a, it's a martial art right yeah. number one and um, you go, you walk through those doors to learn how to defend yourself. That is the sole purpose of jiu-jitsu. It's not about sport jiu-jitsu. It's being able to defend yourself. <clears throat> now, if you can go out and you can compete against somebody across from you that has the same type of accolade or the, the same belt level, same weight class, whatever the case may be, and you can make that work with each other, um, that is super important on the back end of everything, right? So, of course, I think it's self-defense, too. That's yeah, that's your number one aspect. That's the sole purpose why people train is, is literally is the, is the self-defense portion of it. You know, and I think people get too caught up like you said, I think they're all, oh, I can make a living at this. You know, I'm a blue belt. Uh, I'm an all-star. You know, yeah. you haven't done anything yet. Like, truth be yeah. told, you know, I hear blue belts all the time. You know, I see it online. Oh, give me a GoFundMe account. A GoFundMe for what? Go fund your fucking self. Get a job. <laughs> Shit, man. What the fuck's the problem? Yeah. You know? Um, or I need a sponsor. You need a sponsor for what? Fuck, pay like everybody else. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but yeah. the truth of the matter is, is that... You pay to be here. If you were doing basketball down at the rec center, guess what? Same thing. Same exact thing, man. Yeah. yeah. You pay to play in a league, so you pay to compete. It's the same shit. Yeah. You know? There's something to be said about being just trying to be a loyal person, trying to be a good student, basically. Oh, being, being a good student is... Shut up, man. Like, don't try to teach your own seminar on the side of there when the teacher's teaching their thing, dude. And just like, well, I've seen a lot of people leave and go to other schools because they were they were basically guaranteed a belt to yeah. go to that other school. Yeah. Wait, wait, what does it what, Okay. What does that do for you as a person, though? You, you, yeah. you it just shows you have zero integrity and you haven't earned shit. Exactly. I know somebody. I know somebody. I know somebody. No bullshit. That paid for his blue belt. He transitioned and lied and got a purple belt. Then he transitioned again and lied and got a brown belt. And That's I don't know right. if he's a black belt yet That's under right. under somebody else. But he basically lied his way to the top. And there's no loyalty. There's and all it was was it was a belt factory for him. That's all he wanted. Yeah. He just wanted the status. If you asked him to show up to an open mat and train with everybody, the mat don't fucking lie. Exactly. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You're gonna fucking execute as a fucking black belt, or you're gonna get rolled the fuck up. And you're gonna look like a like a buster, right? Yeah. And truth be told, that dude will never show up at an open mat. He won't compete. Yeah. He won't any of the above. Here right. in San Diego, you can't step on the mat. Wearing a belt and not. And the, believe me, oh, yeah, the black belts yeah. that are here, that went to the trenches, you know, the solo black belts, the Barrett black belts, yeah. the fucking Tellez black belts, like those guys, the Atos black belts, the Andre Gaval black belts, those motherfuckers are tried and tested. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's different levels to this shit, don't get me wrong, sure. but, but the truth of the matter is, is that that mat's not gonna fucking lie. You're gonna put in the time and you're gonna show. You know that you can execute at that level. You know what I mean. And, yeah. and granted, you know, yeah, we get older, we gain weight, we slow down, we eat bad. You know, occasionally this and that. But for the most part, you're able to hang on those levels. You know what I mean. Yeah, and, and for, you know, definitively understanding jujitsu and, and that level. Yeah. You know what I mean. But yeah, not to say that everybody that gets a, a purple belt has to have one world. Yeah, hundred you know I mean? percent. But, but don't don't make your don't from don't try to make your instructor give you the belt. Or not. It's just like man, wait till your instructor tells you that you're ready. You know? Bro, yeah. Stop bringing it up. You don't ask a teacher if they're gonna give you a fucking belt. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you ask me, you won't see a belt for another year, even That's if I was it. about to give it to you. Have a little bit of self.
self dignity. Yeah, that's for sure. Know, whatever, man. No, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I can't hate on these people, but I'm just saying, like, for your own personal empowerment, dude, do, do the right. Well, and you've had you've had the opportunity to see the world with jiu jitsu. You've traveled all over the place, right? Yeah. You're an EBI veteran, a five Super League veteran. You did the Bushido Challenge. Yeah. Um, I got to go to Guatemala for it. I got to uh, Guadalajara as well. Yeah, man, I can't believe it. I started off as just very casual training, like yeah. no ambition, no, you know, and just it just um, snowballed into this. And I, bro, I, you've had an amazing career at this point. You it's, know what I mean? Like, so, and, and and the thing is, is you weren't even trying to make a career out of it, right? Such a trip. Yeah. A lot of people don't know. Um, that you're also an artist, um, a very talented artist at that, and you do a lot of amazing jiu-jitsu stuff. I've watched you travel around and do various things with, with art, um, and that's something that I really want to ping on today is the artistic value that you've given to jiu-jitsu, and you know, you've done some amazing things. Your artwork is a, is a classic, is a more of a classic style artwork, and you know, the old Sailor Jerry type stuff, which I fucking find amazing, because you don't find a lot of people that can shoot that anymore, that yeah. classic style. Thanks. And, um, you know, you recently owned up a shop, opened up a shop on your own. Yeah, I've never, that's another thing. I never thought I'd open up my own business. I have zero uh, sense of responsibility and I'm bad with, <laughs> bad with money. I, you know I'm saying? I'm just so irresponsible, man. But I got a good partner, my wife, Jane, and she uh, she helped me out open up the business and all that stuff. Man. What, what, so what really came cool. first, the tattooing or jujitsu? Um, tattooing by just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, by, by maybe a year or two. Yeah. And so, uh, have you have you been an artist your whole life? Have you been drawing your whole life? I uh, yeah. I used to go to church. Like my mom, I grew up. My mom would take me to Jehovah's Witness Church when I was there. Yikes! Yeah, I was, so it was like a lot of hours and at the church, yeah. just sitting there. Yeah. No. So I just had like a little paper in my Bible. You know what I mean? I'd just be drawing, 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 trying to like right. get better at that, just to keep my brain busy. And then when I was a teenager, I got involved with graffiti and. I don't know, man. That, that it was like a real important part of my life as well, you know. So, yeah. So a lot of people know me from like doing graffiti in the late '90s and early 2000s and stuff. Yes. Yes. They're like, oh, you're the guy that did graffiti and stuff, you know. And so, well, and you've been fortunate, like you know, um, in the Latin community. Okay, for for people that don't know what taggers are, all right. Um, you've been fortunate enough to transition, you know, painting on the walls and, and tagging things um, into an actual artistic career. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know people like Defer or, um, you know, Dice One, yeah. um, unless you're in that community, right? It's a that different little Yeah, yeah, veterans, man, like old school veterans, guys. Um, you know, Tribal, Tribal obviously carries a lot of artists around, you know, and you've been yeah. fortunate enough to work with some of these amazing people with Bobby at Tribal and, yeah. and um, I haven't seen that dude in a minute. I gotta go visit him. But I mean, I think it's awesome that you get an opportunity um, to go around and actually like paint walls for high schools now and shit like yeah. that. Like they call you in. I just seen a piece that Dice did at Lincoln High School. Really? He blasted the whole side of the wall for the Lincoln wow. Hornets, man. And I thought that was really amazing. Yeah. Like to call you guys in. I see D for all the time too. You know, he's all over the place doing the same thing, you know, yeah. doing his thing. He just did uh, Orlando Sanchez's academy. He just painted really? all the walls at his academy. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it just becomes about like being able to transfer your passions and, right. and whatever work ethic you developed in another medium and trying to apply that to different mediums. What is your most memorable? What's, what's your most memorable experience doing artwork like that? Oh, like graffiti stuff? Yes, yeah. man. So many, so many good times. But I mean, if I want to just focus on the positive, how many times? How many times were you almost arrested? <laughs> like, if I want to focus on the positive, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, I've gotten arrested a couple times, and then I, I got my house raided. Like they broke down the door, put a gun to my head, and like put put me in jail in front of my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like doing all types of. For graffiti, for, for the whole, yeah, 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 yeah. I got arrested multiple times. That's what I mean. Like, like the old school tag artists, like they know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? And yeah. now, now it's this crazy transitional trend that it's become trendy now to tag. Yeah, it's not. It's not like before where you know we were tagging at a young age because that's what we did. You know, that's what the gangs in the neighborhood did. That's what we did as a whole, right? We were tagging everything. We would tag our names on our notebooks, on walls. It didn't matter, you know. But now it's become trendy to actually have this same artwork. That 
And we got in trouble for years and years and years ago to yeah. transition into what you guys are actually getting off to today. Yeah, it's important for kids to still want to get into trouble and have some adventures and oh, yeah. uh, or do some illegal shit. But um, yeah, there's people <laughs> that were able to like transfer that energy and like turn it into oh, yeah, some, I agree. some illegal stuff. I agree. And if someone is into the illegal stuff and painting freeways, man, like that's their passion and that's cool too, you know what I mean? But for me, I, I wanted to be able to like not have to get arrested and stuff. You know? yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because sometimes those dudes that are into the illegal stuff, I'm like, cool, man, you're the best at that. Like, let's transfer that energy and, and put it's that tattoo. Like, yeah, yeah. Tattoo in or into doing murals or into doing paintings. And it's funny when people are just, they're just like, that's not my thing, dude. You know? Right. It's just not my thing. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so. You've um, done some, early, did, did you do some early artwork for Show Your Role? Because we, we were in the offices what, last year or the year before. Yeah, he's yeah. Got, he got some old some school artwork. Stuff, yeah. Some of your stuff. That's yeah, your stuff that's on the wall. Years. I've worked with Bear for a couple of years now. He's been super generous with me and, and really supportive. And he put together an uh, art show of people that do jiu-jitsu. And it was like amazing. It was in, in LA uh, at the Seventh Letter Gallery. Yep. That was a really important show, I thought. You know, I thought I it was agree. an important show. I agree. It encouraged. Um, yeah, people that are artists to get involved in jujitsu. Like, yeah, yeah. And I think I saw you paint live one time for uh, was it the first royal? Yeah, I think it was uh, the second royal. Yeah, I, I was one of the royals for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five forty. You you were off to the side of the canopy. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you did yes, a live. Yes. You did a live uh, yeah, we painted like the the Last Supper, the Jiu Jitsu I think version so. of it. Yeah. If you ask me who was in there, I, I I haven't seen that painting in a while, but it was like all the major. What happened to that painting? What did they do with that? Bear has it, man. It's, like, a, it's yeah. actually yeah, it's, yeah. it's at Show Your Roll. He has a good collection. Yeah, he has cool stuff, man. Tell us about Pop's Tattoo, man. T tattoo Shop. Yeah, Pop's Tattoos. Well, it's I almost have, located, uh, man, so they know where it's yeah, at. It's too. right here in City Heights. Um, this is uh, my dad's own property of this neighborhood for about 30 years now, so I'm really proud to be able to open up a small business in this area. It's on University, and it's me, my wife, and my homie Joe. Small operation, and uh, all hand-painted flash. Wow. And so, you know, just like, there's almost 2,000 designs that are hand painted. And so that's my approach, trying to encourage people to get um, stuff off the wall, you know, sort of trying to try make their arm look good. So when they're older, it looks, it looks good, you know. You have a lot of jiu-jitsu guys going there, guys, girls? So many, yeah. They have tattooed, uh, I did a whole sleeve on JT Torres, I did a whole sleeve on Jeff Glover, uh, the Hulk tattooed multiple people, man, just, they're all good, good dudes, you know. Come supply. I'm like, I feel like more jujitsu guys are getting better tattoos. Yeah. You know, everybody. I have tattoos myself. There are tattoos that I mean, we, we get them for our own reasons, right? Yeah. But we all have a bad tattoo here. Of course. Oh, I mean, bro, my I, first I, tattoo. I my do. first tattoo was the worst tattoo ever, and I didn't even, you know, you thought you were big shit, right? I was like 16 or 17, and I was like, oh man, yeah. I'm gonna get a tattoo, this is the shit. And you know, I I am a a hardcore, hardcore Cypress Hill fan. I love Cypress Hill. And um, you know, that was a big part of my youth, you know what I mean? Cypress yeah. Hill was coming out like in, in my, my sophomore year in high school. Album. Yeah, that first album, yeah. And um, I went and I got the Cypress Hill emblem on my shoulder. That's that. And, and I thought, I thought, man, yeah, this shit, seen the, this skull, the skull in the cross, it's gone. I, I had it covered up. It's, it's, I ended up covering it up because it was so bad. Yeah. So the skull and the crossbones, like I live by that shit, right? And and like all the underground old school hip hop, you know, delinquent habits, um, you know, uh, Funk Duke. Yes, and, and yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like sure. around. Says, is it Funk? What's the, what's the main guy from Funk Duke? Is he's a he's a tattoo artist? Out is in, he? Uh, oh, man, Nor I think it's Norwalk. Really? Yeah, yeah Funk Duke is dope. Yeah. Well. So anyway, I got this tattoo and it was, man, I was so proud of that shit. You know, you walk out of there and I didn't even have it filled in, bro. They only did the outline. It was so fucking bad. They did a single needle on it wow. and it was fucking crooked and all kinds of shit. I'm like, man, I was proud of that shit. And I didn't realize how bad it was until probably a year down the road, right? <clears throat> and a lot of my artwork... Um, I have a friend actually that started tattooing in high school and uh, I remember I wouldn't let him tattoo me for the first couple years. I was like, bro, you can go fuck up oranges or whatever you want, but you're not doing it on me till I know. Now this dude travels all over the place, man. He does tattoo conventions, all kinds yeah. of shit. He's fucking amazing. And he's done a ton of work for me. And 
he ended up finally covering it up for me, where he's like, I can't look at that thing no more, man. It's so bad. You know what I mean? Is he the one that originally did it? No, no. I went to this tattoo shop, man, and this lady did it. I thought I was big shit, you know, doing that, man. It was absolutely garbage. So, yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember, like, a lot of MMA fighters have the worst tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. But everyone's. <laughs> they don't want to spend the money on it. They don't want to spend the money on it. Well, yeah, man. I think it's like architects and MMA fighters and. Um, Mostly architects and MMA fighters get the worst tattoos. I don't know why. Have, have there ever been? They're like super particular. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I wanted, bro. This is what I fucking wanted. Could you just do this? But you see I the vision. Like, oh, sometimes, oh, you know, as a tattoo artist, what's crazy, right? You see a different vision sometimes than what yeah. they see, and you're like, no, man. Actually, if we actually reverse yeah. it, it'll it'll actually if we do the reverse model of that, mm -hmm. it'll look 20, 50 times better, man. You just don't you don't see it because I see it every day. You know what I mean? That's why you're the artist and I'm not. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, what, between what, their idea and a good tattoo. 100%. So people go in, they say they want this, and you might not like it. What's right. the worst tattoo you've ever had to put on someone that you, the moment you weren't happy with it, but you're like, fuck, I just have to do it because it's pain. Well, I tattooed, um, I'm, I'm good friends with my friend Manolo. My Manny. Friend. Manny. Yeah, dude, Manny's the fucking dude. Yeah, I love that you, guy. You did his, his whole stomach. Yeah, I did his whole stomach. I did a giant Godzilla fighting, uh, you know, this is Godzilla just destroying Tokyo and stuff. And then on the back, I did, um, what's Wasn't it a big samurai or something on the back? Yeah, no, it's like the dude from the Philippines. Uh, the Fili he's Filipino, so he killed Magellan. Okay. Uh, Lapu Lapu, I think. Okay. Is. Yeah, so I did that on his back. Huge. Two enormous heads. But then he comes into the shop and he's like, I want a, a portrait of myself tattooed on my leg. And but what he wanted was the Eiffel Tower tattooed on his leg. Uh, the Eiffel Tower being, being two dudes... Um, having sex with another woman and so I had to do a portrait of him where you can see his ass and the back tattoo <laughs> uh, you can see his front we tattoo in. and uh, they're having like his clone or whatever is having they're having sex with another woman and it was the whole thing is just insane because I, I tattooed the tattoos that I did on him on the tattoo as well it was like Inception dude it was like tattoo Inception to the next level I couldn't even I couldn't even post it bro because it was just so graphic and weird you know <laughs> Manny we're gonna come and see a picture of this yeah, shit yeah. so man he's a legend man for that one and That's I funny. tried to talk him out of it multiple times and he's like hey man remember that sometimes that people like, just really want something specific man and there's no tattoo. way around it you yeah, know what I mean I love there's that no way tattoo, around it though. so awesome. thank, thank goodness sometimes the customer is right sometimes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I get it that's awesome <laughs> but it ain't like the customer's always this ain't like Burger King or nothing this is the customer's always right I'll be like nah bro I, we ain't doing that so you've actually had to turn people away yeah I'll just I'll just tell if I don't like someone's attitude that's it that's the thing about owning up my own shop is that I'm able to tell someone to fuck off yeah that makes a lot yeah, of sense yeah. and and more uh, <coughs> I think more employers should be giving their employees the, the opportunity the, the to do power, that as well the power to tell someone to fuck off when they're being rude when they're being over the top rude you yeah know? I, don't, I don't think as much as you always want to say the customer is right it also comes down to uh, dignity and respect you know what I mean you like, gotta walk out of, uh, like a man yeah you yeah. you, wanna, feel, feel like you, you man, can't be little somebody in a restaurant you know what I mean and let me tell you man and I'll tell you I, I have a you know, I grew up working in, in restaurants and bars, and um, my family owns restaurants back in Colorado and stuff, and, you know, I, the smell of the kitchens is horrible. You know, if anybody's ever worked in a restaurant or a hotel, like in the hospitality industry, is, oh, man, your clothes smell for days, you know, you have specific clothes, you only wear to work, and so on and so forth, and this weekend, I was in Chicago doing the, uh, the Echelon Front, and I'll tell you, um, we were in a hotel downtown Chicago. Man, I had to walk through the kitchens and, and, the, and the, you know, the underground areas of the hotel again and it was man it was a reminder of how hard those people work and people treat them like shit you know so they work up. so hard man and uh it brought me back to humble roots thinking about it you know and it's like you know i i tip very very well whenever i go to restaurants because i know how hard those people work i've always been like that and um, yeah. i believe that that's the way they make their living and i think people um, disregard how hard they work they have no idea because maybe they never did that type of job yeah you know and so they don't know but yeah i agree yeah. I've had to like, kick people out of the shop. Sometimes people uh, start drinking. I'm like, dude, you can't be doing that. Yeah, that's not and, good. Uh, 
just just like hard alcohol, and I'm like, I'll be nice to him. I'm like, all right, man, you can have a drink or two. But if you're well, the truth is, is that if you're, if you're pretty if you're pretty drunk, right, it, it dilutes the bloodline, right, yeah, and it yeah, makes it thinner. Nice. So if you they just bleed constantly versus yeah. you know a natural bleeding reaction, right? Yeah, and as a general rule, when people start trying to drink hard uh, liquor while they're getting tattooed, they just turn into a piece of shit, you know. Yeah. But uh, so that's I, I think that's the biggest problem. But sipping on a little bit of beer before or during your tattoo, you'll be all right. You know, right. As long as you're not acting dumb. You've had to physically remove people. Yeah, I had a couple like just weird bumps and stuff, and I had to like actually carry them off the block. My wife threw a giant stack of uh, magazines at this one bum bitch because she was acting shitty. She cracked like cracked her head. <laughs> Don't it forget, we are in the hood in this in this area right here. Okay, this is the hood. Don't forget that. So you know, not everyone, not every uh, woman that's homeless is a bum bitch, but this lady was. She was like <laughs> shitty. Well, and it's hard too because so many people, you know, so many people that are that are homeless, you know, they, they deal with mental illnesses and they're yeah. drug addicts and they're alcoholics. Yeah, yeah it makes but it you hard. You know, you'd be surprised uh, how not crazy someone turns when you um, tell them that you're going to commit violence against them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're crazy, 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 and I'm like, I'm going to fuck you up. And then all of a sudden, they sober <laughs> up. They're like, oh, um, I'm sorry, sir. Have a good day. And I'm like, wait, I thought you were Change that shit up real quick, oh, right? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're fucking normal. Yeah, uh, I fall for it. Well, you're still responsible for your actions, dude. I don't give a fuck how drunk you are, how crazy you are. You're responsible for your fucking no, uh, your actions. Right? So, there's a video of you, came out about a year ago. And uh, somebody was actually trying to break into your house, or they did break into yeah, the house, they right? Broke into and, my and you, dad's house. Broke into your dad's house, and, and you actually caught them, slapped them in a fucking triangle, and sat on them, and, yeah. and waited for the cops to come. You didn't yeah. hurt the guy. Yeah. You didn't smack him up. You just locked him into a reverse triangle and held him and sat on him <laughs> yeah. until the cops came. And that video went viral. I mean, it probably did one hundred and fifty thousand hits yeah, and views, true. right? And it, right. and it was shared on multiple outlets everywhere. So millions, I mean, it's millions. Yeah, 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 yeah. It did. It did probably. I mean, on some just some social outlets, I seen it like it was in the hundreds, thousands. So it did. It probably did well over a million. Yeah, views, the arena right? one got five million already. Five million views. Yeah. That's crazy. That's just on one platform. Yeah. So, that's, imagine, so imagine so weird. all the different outlets that were sharing yeah. it. Yeah. So how did that come about? I mean, um, were you just walking by? Were you passing by your, your well, dad's house? Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, I was walking. I live on the property in the back of my dad's house, so I was like going into my house, and this dude is in my yard, and he had like dirt on his face, and he's like, "Oh, there's a dog chasing me." I was like, "What the fuck are you doing in my dad's yard?" You know, and like, he's like, "Oh, there, I was getting chased by a dog. Can I go out this way from the back?" I was like, I was really confused. I was kind of bad. You're it. kind of like, all right, yeah, that's yeah, cool, man. Get out of here, bro. You know what I mean? Idiot. Yeah, yeah, you feel bad, bad you know? Yeah. Yeah. not think, and I'm just like, oh, sure, man, walk, you know, go out through the back, you know? And then, like, I noticed that my dad's house was broken into, and so I, like, started chasing him after that. And I was able to catch him a block away and bring him back to my dad's house. Oh, my and my dad had no idea that this guy Which was inside. Like, yeah, my dad went to the house while that guy was in there, and then he went to the front house to... So if my dad would have ran into me, he probably would have tried to fight him. Oh, and he might Wait, have got a lot of people don't know this about your dad. Your dad's an old school boxer. My dad might have whooped his ass. Actually. And, and dad, dad, pops is yeah. pops is in his pops has got to be in his sixties now, right? Yeah, pops he is in just his turned seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, but let me tell you something. Pops can still gets down. I see him. I see him around the neighborhood all the time. Wow. He's still walking around. He's still boxing. He's still helping oh, coach yeah. boxing. He's yeah. Don't don't right get it hand. twisted. Yeah, don't yep. get it by that right hand, dude. You get knocked out. And so anyways, I didn't want my dad fighting this dude. So I brought him back. I was like, hey, dad, this guy just broke into your house. And my dad was like shocked. And he's like, my dad's so nice to people. And he's, and he's like, well, how old are you? Because he thought maybe if he's a young kid from around the neighborhood, we can talk to his parents. He was in his 20s. Yeah, my dad was like, oh, you're going to jail. You know? And as soon as he said that, the guy tried to go crazy on me and, and uh, threw him to the ground. I'm going to try and go. <laughs> who's, who's recording? Who take that? The neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got a camera somewhere, yeah, man. Though, because you're on the floor yelling at that dude, telling him, don't move, you'll break yeah. his fucking arm, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said something like that. Yeah. Like, who's, who's videotaping that? Yeah, the neighbor was recording the dude. Um, I, uh, it's good to record him because, like, I, I thought that I was going to have to, like, break his arm because he was, like, moving around. And so I'm like, dude, I don't want to break this dude's arm and put him, put him to sleep or I don't know what to do, you know, basically. And, um... I don't know, man. It was the first time that I told my dad, I was like, hey, dad, you got to call the cops, you know, because 
yeah. back in the days it's like Even you would have just beat their ass yeah, yeah you would have beat their ass yeah. and yeah. left yeah. them in the alley yeah, yeah. it's the whole thing like you just don't get the cops involved dude I subscribe yeah. to that if you could avoid getting the cops involved oh, 100%. Anything, just you know talk to the individual or hood mentality just, man yeah that's the way it is but, but it's good but it's also not good yeah on some hood mentality shit like really what was I supposed to do there yeah like kill this dude stab him scare the shit out of him 100% or, or let him go and be like just don't do it again I mean yep. he lives in my neighborhood he's breaking into people's houses for sure so it was the first time that I was like man I'm gonna have to like break hood code on this one dude we gotta call the cops like, yeah you know, a few years ago this is probably it's probably been about 10 or 12 years and um, I was I had a house right up the street right here it yeah. was in it was in I was in transition from moving from one um, town home into another house I was waiting for my house to be ready and I, I stayed in this couple in this house for a couple of months and I parked my truck